Thank you very much. Um, hello, everyone. Uh, thank you very much for uh, attending this session. My name is uh, Elodie uh, Bossio. I have been part of the Covenant of Mayor's Office since uh, the beginning. And uh, to be honest, I didn't know uh, I would be still there in 2020. And so I'm really happy to uh, moderate this uh, uh, forward-looking sessions. Uh, and uh, I'm not sure I, I should hope to be there to check the results in uh, 2050. But um, uh, I'm really looking forward to uh, hearing about the presentations today. So uh, let me first uh, introduce our uh, first speaker, uh, Brieux, uh, from uh, the uh, European Commission DG Energy. Um, I don't see everyone on my screen. Um, I'm, I'm here, Lodi, okay, whenever great. you're ready. <laughs> <laughs> okay, then um, Brieux, the floor is yours then. Thank you very much, Elodie. Good morning, everyone, and a very warm welcome to this session on behalf of the European Commission. Um, as Elodie alluded in her uh, introductory words, today we're going to talk about uh, 2050 and more specifically about how to ensure that we live in a climate neutral Europe by 2050 and how you as cities, as signatories of the covenant, can lead by example and drive the rest of the continent uh, in this major unprecedented transition. Um, my name is Brio Bosnik. I work for the European Commission in DG Energy, where I follow the work of the Covenant of Mayors. And my job this morning uh, will be to give you a bit more background on why and how uh, the Covenant of Mayors has raised its, its ambition with this 2050 uh, timeline and what it means concretely for you as signatories or prospective signatories of the Covenant. So if I can have the next slide. The first uh, part of my presentation is a bit about the reasons behind raising ambitions. We took the decision last year in 2020, and you could say that it was a series of factors that prompted us to, uh, to move ahead uh, with, with this change. First, the covenant reached its first milestone in 2020. So Elodie reminded us of the uh, long history behind the, the covenant. It's an initiative that was created in 2008 and uh, at, it, at its creation, the covenant was looking at 2020 as a first milestone, let's say. Uh, so when we reached this year, it was a good moment to take a step back and look at what the future of the covenant was going to be. The second factor is that the EU adopted its green deal uh, with new objectives cutting emissions by 55% by 2030 and reaching climate neutrality by 2050, which is a major step for the EU energy and climate policy. We, as a union, intend to be climate neutral by mid-century. This is one of the world's most ambitious objectives of en on energy and climate. And the covenant, which has always been about implementing EU goals at local level to make sure that we reach them collectively, uh, so it was logical in a way to take that step in the covenant as well. This is how the covenant remains the largest and the most ambitious movement of local authorities in the world, uh, what it is today. Uh, a third factor, um, Europe and the world, of course, were hit by a pandemic, which also brought an economic crisis and uh, our economies to a full stop. Um, now we see growth back, we see things opening up again, but we also know that we cannot build you know, things exactly as they were, uh, simply because they were not sustainable. So we have to do things differently. Um, and the EU has put a lot of money on the table with a recovery plan, but uh, we need to spend this money wisely. And to do so, we have to, to have the highest possible level of ambition at all levels, but especially locally, because this is where most of the work will happen. You won't simply proclaim climate neutrality by law nationwide. You will have to renovate flats, to put greenery in public spaces, to put solar panels on the roof of your local school, etc. And these are responsibilities of local authorities. So we need to help them with financial support, of course, but also by making sure that they have the right level of ambition and the right tools. Uh, and for that, uh, you know, this is where the covenant comes into play. And for the covenant to remain this sort of compass that guides cities in the planning and implementing their actions, uh, we need it to raise its ambition to the new new challenges and the new um, the, the new world that is opening post pandemic. 
So to summarize, I would say the time was right, the world has changed, and the covenant needed to change with it. So now if we move on to the next slide, I just want to be very quickly making a short um, point on how we made these changes. It's not the most important from a political perspective, but in terms of um, who we are as an initiative, the covenant is a of course, a very participatory initiative. We don't make uh, decisions without consulting first. And I want to insist on the fact that we did uh, wage very wide reaching uh, consult, uh, consult, consultations with, uh, with Covenant signatories. Uh, we had surveys, uh, discussions with local, but also national and regional partners and uh, really asking whether they would be supportive of this uh, new ambition, this new climate neutrality ambition, uh, and this 2050 timeline. And the results were very, very clear that signatories uh, support such, uh, such a move and, uh, and wanted to see reflected in a new commitment text. And this is uh, what, what we have. So if we move on to the next slide, I'm just going to share with you what are the novelties, what is there in this new commitment text, uh, especially as regards to this climate neutrality and 2050 vision. So first we have new targets, obviously, uh, especially this common vision towards climate neutrality by 2050. Um, I would like to insist on this idea that this is a common vision. Um, the reality is that there will be different timelines of the transition in the EU. It doesn't mean that some will go faster than others, but rather that not everybody starts from the same point, right? So some cities will manage to reach climate neutrality by the end of the decade. This is great. And others will need more time and this is normal. So what is important is that we are all moving in the same direction and that this direction is climate neutrality and that 2050 is the latest date basically that we can reach climate neutrality. Second novelty, uh, the idea of, yeah, let's stay on the slide for now. Uh, second novelty is the idea that we have a climate emergency, that we cannot wait, and that we cannot make it a second or a third priority. It has to be priority number one, and it has to guide all of our actions. So doesn't mean we don't do anything else, but when we improve our infrastructure, when we develop our social policies, we always have to have climate neutrality and this transition that we're going to go through in mind. And that brings me to the third point here, which is that the shift to climate neutrality will have distributional impacts. We are not all equal in front of the transition. Some of us, all of us will ultimately benefit from it, obviously, but some of us will have more difficulties to uh, go through the transition, especially those that are most vulnerable. Uh, for instance, you know, households that cannot invest in a new car or immediately renovate their house. This costs money, of course, and they need to be accompanied. Uh, we need to accompany the citizens so that there is a just transition. And last point here, uh, last but not least, uh, we recognize that reaching climate neutrality cannot be achieved by the town hall alone. This is not just a decision of the mayor, let's say. It requires a society-wide effort. It requires citizens and businesses taking action. So here in this new commitment, we also promote the idea of local climate pacts, so ways of engaging with local stakeholders to achieve this objective of climate neutrality commonly, let's say, as a city, a city made of, obviously, the mayors, but also citizens, inhabitants, businesses. So this really this common movement uh, at city level, which we, want to, uh, which we want to help promote. So if you move to the next two slides, I'm, I'm not going to spend much time here. This is just how this is reflected in uh, the commitment text with these four blocks, uh, of which you actually had the uh, a preview today because we actually structured uh, this uh, this morning's ceremony around these four blocks. So commit, engage, and uh, if we move on to the next slide, act. And now we're in the networking part, but which is very important. We want the commission, the the, the covenant of mayors, to be a place where uh, you get inspiration uh, from each other. So that's it on the on on the on the what on the on the what this new co co uh, co covenant commitment is. 
Um, let me just finish very briefly with a sort of call for you to join or rejoin this, uh, this covenant with the new ambition. Um, reaching climate neutrality by 2050 or even before 2050 is difficult. Uh, it requires changing many things, adapting the way we live, we move, we work, we eat. And it won't happen naturally by inertia. It requires active policies. And we're very conscious of this. But we believe that the covenant can help you on this difficult path. Uh, how can we help you? We can help you uh, by planning the transition locally. It's important to have a plan uh, and giving you the tools to pilot this transition. Uh, we will also help you get inspiration from what happens all around Europe in other cities because we are smarter together. We have much to learn from each other. We will also help you explain to your constituents why what you do is important, why they should join in by developing methodologies uh, for engaging citizens, uh, what I mentioned before with these local climate pacts. And at the end of the day, this will give your city a real voice, a voice on the national stage, uh, on the European stage to influence national and European politics. Uh, but also at the international level, uh, you know that the climate movement is global, it has no borders, and you will get a taste of that with the presentation of the, um, the, the contribution of the global covenant of mayors in a minute. So being part of the covenant of mayors uh, Europe is really your ticket to this international movement of cities that are taking the lead globally, and we believe that this is really uh, you know, an important point for you to consider. Uh, when you when you intend to join the, the covenant of mayors. So now I guess what is really left for us to explain is how you can join this new covenant, whether uh, you are already a signatory or you intend to become one. And for that, I will pass the floor to my colleague, uh, Maria Angela from the covenant of mayor's office, who will walk you through the process. Thank you very much. Good morning, everyone. Uh, maybe Clemence, you can move to the next one. Thank you. So um, thank you, Brio, for your presentations. Um, now we pass on how we are asking municipalities to, to join the initiatives and what we're actually asking with these new commitments. So the first thing that we ask to municipalities is to commit to reaching climate neutrality by 2050. As Brio mentioned, we are well aware that uh, every municipality has its own timeline on the road to climate neutrality. And for these reasons, we are implementing what we call differentiated approach, meaning that it is up to the municipalities to um, set what are their intermediate milestones on the road to climate neutrality. It is up to them to set uh, their mid-term and long-term targets. We only ask them to be consistent with European objectives and at least as ambitious as their national targets. Next slide. Thank you. So the covenant focuses on our three pillars, mitigation, adaptation, and energy poverty. With the, our new commitments, we also encourage uh, municipalities to uh, integrate uh, socially just transition considerations as a core, core, core cross-cutting principle of their climate strategies. Uh, in order to, trans to translate their ambitions commitment into relevant local actions and uh, solutions, we ask senators to undertake a transformational change that is happening and including all sectors of our societies from the classic energy related uh, sectors such as building or transport, but also including uh, civil protection, health, biodiversity and so on. Next slide, please. Um, again, I want to focus on uh, what are our new uh, priorities. I will just want to briefly mention what are the steps that we require to our signatories. So um, other than the commitments and so adhering to the initiatives, signatories are requested to set targets, assess baseline and then develop and submit an action plan within two years from their formal adhesion. And then they also commit to monitor uh, and report on the implementation of the action plans every two years from their submissions. Next slide, please. So practical steps on how to join the initiatives. If you're not signatories yet, 
um, you can present our commitment document to your local council and get it approved and then of course signed by the mayor. The commitment document is available in all the European Union official languages. Once the commitment document is signed, you can uh, register through an online form, also mentioned uh, by Brio earlier, uh, where you simply uh, need to include your organization's data, upload the commitment document and set your mid-term and long-term targets, and then the classic contact details uh, of your mayor and the main contact person. Once that you submit the request and it is approved from our site, it, you receive the credential to access uh, our dedicated platform called My Covenant, and you become an official member of the community. Next slide. Here, please again uh, the link to join. As for the commitment document, the website and the uh, dedicated platform, also the uh, registration form is, is available in all European Union official languages. Next slide. Instead, if you are already a signatory of the Covenant of Mayors and you are committed either to 2020 or 2030 targets, you can renew your commitments through the platform. In particular, you shall access your municipality's profile, which is accessible by several uh, points in the platform, but in particular by the blue square that is on the top left of your dashboard in my Covenant. There you find this button called Renew. You simply need to click on it and then to upload uh, the signed commitment document. The commitment document is exactly the same used for new signatories. Again, you shall um, upload your uh, mid-term and long-term target, and then you simply need to click on save in order to submit your request. I think, yes, that's it. That's it from my side. Thank you. And of course, if you have questions, we have time today to answer them. Sorry, it takes time because you guys do, do not unmute uh, my mic. Um, thank you, Maria Angela. Um, we are now moving on to uh, Piero Remetti from the uh, Global Covenant of Mayor's Office. He's the team leader of the EU support uh, team. Uh, and uh, he uh, will uh, work us uh, through uh, the global vision of uh, this uh, Covenant of Mayor's commitment. Piero, can you uh, take... Can you open your video and mic? Thank you. Yes, hello. Hello, good morning. Thank you very much, Elodie. And thank you for having me and uh, the Global Covenant of Mieros, of course, to participating uh, and contributing to this very important event. I will try to give you a very brief touch of the, on a more international and wider and global perspective in the very similar and very connected activities to uh, a reality to, to the Covenant of Mayor CU. So let me try to introduce to all of you, uh, mostly to those who are not, not familiar yet with the Global Covenant of Mayors, the nature of our alliance. Um, the next, please. Uh, I don't think really there's so much need to spend a lot of words in the, in the, in the field of our scope missions because they are pretty much similar among the Global Covenant of Mayors and the European Covenant of Mayors, we are actually an alliance of cities, a coalition of cities, or a community as it was uh, chosen in the first uh, uh, general session of this uh, ceremony this morning, um, of cities and partners uh, mobilized and active in order to achieve a climate neutral and the climate resilient future in a, in a shorter time as possible, let's say, uh, more generally speaking, like this. Um, so maybe more useful for you to focus on the differences uh, among uh, global covenant of mayors and the covenant of mayors. Global one is uh, uh, as a different geographical scope, of course, we are dealing with uh, at a global scale with the worldwide uh, uh, scenario and arena. So dealing in order to, let's say, we could first probably define this as export the, the precious, excellent, wonderful experience provided by the European cities through their mobilization in the Covenant of Mayor Caesar abroad. Uh, one more difference is about the, the age. Mm, as we remember, I reminded uh, a few minutes ago, Covenant of Mayors uh, uh, already, uh, Europe already exists since a long time, 2008, while the 
global covenant uh, of measures for climate and gender it dates back uh, a few years ago, uh, end of 2016, beginning early 2017, one year later, the signing of the Paris Agreement, when actually two previously existing networks and alliances of cities, the European Covenant of Mayors and the Compact of Mayors, decided to share and to, to put in common resources, efforts, strategies, and activities in order to get more results and more uh, brilliant consequence on their action and impacts. Uh, the next, please. Um, so it, you can consider the European Covenant of Mayors as the building block, the building uh, uh, brick of the uh, actual global covenant of mayors. Uh, after those two uh, starting founders, uh, yeah, thank you very much. After those two, many other partners joined this uh, new adventure. You can have here a look on the uh, most important one, the founders one, the, what do, those who participate in, in the founding phase, but many others have joined the um, the new alliance, the new alliance. And now we have more than a relation, a strict and, and comparative and, and working relation with more than 100 partners from all around the world. Uh, nowadays, we have uh, important numbers. Next, yes, please. Uh, as you can see from very, this very much updated screenshot from the website, we can count of uh, more than 1 billion people reflected by our signatory cities that are currently more than 11,000, next to 12,000, and are increasing, I would say, day by day. Uh, most importantly, the potential for reduction of CO2 emissions for implementation con con as a consequence of implementation of the climate action plan developed by our cities could be around 44, 24 billions of tons of CO2 uh, a year by, uh, by, by 2030. Um, next, please. If I can also provide you a, a more narrow window on our results and our situation working uh, impact in the last couple of years, let's say the pandemic age, uh, since end of 2019. So, and you can see from here that uh, either in those very difficult situations for all of us, uh, we could reach out and gain uh, 1,500 cities and local governments joining the Global Covenant of Mayors uh, Alliance. Those including also 20 new countries and more or less 200 million uh, uh, millions of additional people. Uh, I would like here also to mark and to stress very significant regional growth from the Latin America and from the African our regional covenants operating there did very good performances. And we are now covering more or less uh, around 13% of the global population in the world. And as already mentioned earlier, the uh, potential for uh, uh, CO2 emission reduction increased uh, is increasing day by day to our implementation of, of our climate action plan. Next, please. Uh, about our governance structure, about our how our uh, decision making processes uh, uh, implemented and running through the uh, all the needs and daily needs and working operationally, I would just like to remind our uh, mayoral board that is including and, and representing different regions in the world. Um, Mayor of Paris, uh, Miss Anne Hidalgo, and Mayor Toh Heidelberg are representing European cities here. This mayoral board is uh, uh, importantly co chaired by uh, Michael Bloomberg and Franz Timmermans, an ADP uh, European Franz Timmermans, that are actually the, the two founding uh, uh, realities, most important. Uh, uh, implementing the global activities of the global covenant uh, of mayors. The next one, but uh, if you are going in, in, in the bottom side of the, um, not, not because less important, of course, but in the more operational side of our working structure, you can see that we have already uh, established and operationalized the 13 regional covenants of mayors uh, all around the world. They are covering in most part of the world. There are very few areas that are currently not covered by our initiative and uh, intervention and services, but let me say that those will be soon covered. Um, of course, uh, in Europe, 
there is the operating to, to, to this, this respect, there is the covenant of mayors Europe. Uh, all those structures are provided with help desk that are taking care of daily uh, management of activities and support provided to our cities. Next, please. Uh, many reasons now actually to, to, to join the, the Global Covenant of Mayors uh, Adventure and, and Alliance. Uh, already Brooke remembered very well the importance of joining a, 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 such a powerful and historical moment in this particular moment. But if, you, if we can go to a more uh, operational uh, uh, reasons, next please, uh, we can see that we are offering same type and range of, uh, uh, of services and support to our signatory cities that actually the Covenant of Mayors is providing to the European cities. Uh, of course, this uh, uh, needs to be to deal with the many different uh, uh, and huge variety and range of institutional setup in different countries in the world, uh, very much less homogeneous than the European institutional framework set up uh, uh, as, as for the Covenant of Mayors Europe case. I have a light here uh, uh, in red, the support for collaboration across all levels of government, this so named the multi-level governance for implementation of climate action plan, because I think this is actually uh, I, I don't know if you can agree with me, but I see is this, this field of activity as the one where we have to accelerate as much as possible our, our support to cities. You consider that access to financing for an European cities, either in absence of national financing, uh, there, there's a lot of opportunities provided by the European Union. This is not the case for, a, a, let's say, medium small city in Asia or in Latin America or in Africa or in different countries. So, uh, there is the need for to, to access. It, it seems sometimes that uh, uh, the, 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 the implementation of climate action plan and the implementation of NDC at national level are going through parallel pathways and pra parallel channels that are not often integrating and cooperating and communicating each other. This is where we have to put more efforts in the future uh, as a global covenant, but uh, of course, with relation to the cities that are implementing their own climate action plan. Next, please. Uh, other many services and opportunities for cities joining to the regional covenants, uh, our, our alliance. Again, I put here some highlighted red in technical assistance because we are starting now as a global secretariat to provide also technical assistance to our cities. And in this particular field, there will be also opportunity for European cities. So I strongly recommend you to stay tuned with our uh, communication channels because there will be uh, very much services that we'll be able to provide in a short time with a strong and, and important focus on implementation of climate action plans that in the case of the European Union, of course, they are named SECAPS, Sustainable Energy and Climate Action Plan. Next, please. Um, going out, our main activities are flowing through three main uh, uh, important initiatives, the Innovate for Cities, the Invest for Cities and the Data for Cities. Very quickly, I'm running out of time and I don't want to take your time. Uh, next, please. So just to give you a very uh, example of each one of them, in the case of Invest of Cities, we have launched uh, already a couple of years ago, the City Climate Finance Gap Fund uh, that will be able to unlock 4 billion of, of uh, uh, euros in the in the next following years through provision of technical assistance for uh, help and support cities in developing pre-feasibility stage and more attractive and bankable projects or in the case next please of uh, 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 ne uh, innovate for cities you please consider that the the next week very important conference innovate for cities 2021 organized by the climate, the, the, the Global Covenant of Mayors in partnership with the UN Habitat and, and already registering more than 3000 uh, part participants. That will be the place for uh, to understand, to learn and, and to exchange knowledge uh, and more recent and more updated uh, information on uh, uh, urban innovation in many fields. I strongly recommend you to register or to participate or to stay tuned if you want to uh, your city being part of this very important initiative. And uh, next, please, in, in, the, in the case of uh, data, uh, um, uh, data for cities, we have developed 
the common reporting framework that is a standardized reporting framework able to and capable to put in connection and to establish a dialogue between different uh, reporting platforms. You have the excellent one in Europe that is the uh, My Covenant platform. There are many others in the world working with the same uh, uh, with the same scope and having uh, different problems and of conflict and communication in the past. Now, thanks to the common reporting framework uh, defined by the uh, Global Covenant on Mayors, most important of those platforms are capable to dialogue and to interconnect and to be compatible with each other. Uh, now, uh, last not least, very uh, sorry if you if you come back just one minute. Yeah, yeah. You know, just to, to to remind you, very very next updates and upcoming announcement and initiative. Uh, the first one already spoken about the this uh, Innovate for City initiative. We'll be launching in the next. Uh, 20, uh, COP26, a couple of very important report and playbook uh, on regional and local contribution towards the NDC's implementation, as well as our annual aggregation report showing and showcasing the impacts reached by uh, our cities all across the uh, regional, uh, different regions in the world. We are uh, again uh, uh, undergoing and, and undertaking integration of the energy access and energy poverty pillars in the, in the, into our covenants work and into, into our common reporting framework. This is again perfectly in line with the covenant of mayors uh, activities. So uh, I see, of course, a lot of and also uh, increasing cooperation among the two and will be remain available to. Uh, facilitate this process and to support each other in time. Thanks a lot again for your, your hospitality in this important event and available to respond to any uh, further information you might need. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Piero, for this uh, extensive presentation of the uh, uh, Global Covenant. Um, I would like to uh, inform as well uh, all the participants that at the end of the session, uh, there would be a short Q&A uh, session, so please use the chat uh, to already uh, ask your questions or, uh, or type uh, any comment you might have and you want to share with the uh, audience. Um, so uh, our first part uh, of the uh, session is uh, finished and now we are moving on to the how, how to plan for 2050 and uh, we are uh, um, having two examples from uh, European projects. That will be followed by uh, testimonials from uh, coordinators, so regions and uh, signatories. So um, I will invite Yuritsa uh, Peko uh, from uh, Regional Energy Agency North in Croatia to present us the C250 experience. Yuritsa, uh, floor is yours. Okay, hello everyone, hello from, from Croatia. Thank you, Elodie, for, for, the, for an introduction. So I will present to you our experience from uh, CTREC 50 project on uh, long-term energy and climate planning and preparation of local authorities to become car carbon neutral by 2050. Uh, please click. Uh, as you can see on the map, uh, our consortium covers almost half of Europe. This is very important in uh, terms of replication and dissemination of results because it will as um, an example, encourage other local authorities to think differently. Well, um, this can uh, be confirmed by colleagues from uh, Covenant of Mayor's Office based on uh, new cities that committed to 2030 objectives. And I must point out that uh, the key role in achieving such serious and ambitious uh, goals is played by those stakeholders uh, who are constantly supporting local authorities such as energy agencies, um, universities, thematic NGOs, etc. etc. Yeah. So uh, let's get back to C Track 50 project. C Track 50 project started in 2018 uh, when we started to motivate local and regional uh, authorities to define its long term energy and climate policy priorities to become carbon neutral until um, 2050. Uh, we were aware that the rapid and high quality achievement of the set goals requires the cooperation of different levels of government and thus um, uh, we did best of ourselves uh, to promote and enable multi-level governance in our countries. 
And I think uh, we have made a big step uh, by connecting local, regional and national levels in creating energy and climate policy. And finally, what's more important, we supported uh, regional and local authorities in development of SECAPs and in preparation of funding proposals to facilitate project realization and all that uh, with the final aim to achieve climate resilience and carbon neutrality by 2050. Um, next, there is uh, no better way to present our work than a step-by-step -step visualization. Uh, so the first step in achieving our goals is to set uh, a vision for 2050, where the well-known initiative has made it uh, easier for us. Um, although uh, Covenant of Mayors initiative is present uh, here for years, uh, we had big challenge with some local authorities to, uh, to convince them and motivate them to embark on track to carbon neutrality by 2050. Uh, the first challenge uh, was successfully solved and we supported more than enough uh, local authorities to commit to 2030 objectives with a vision to 2050. Uh, the next step is assessment of uh, current situation and development of baseline energy consumption and consequently uh, baseline emission inventory, what is important for development of mitigation strategy. In parallel, uh, we also worked on assessment of risks and vulnerabilities to prepare a basis for creation of uh, actions related to climate change adaptation. Besides design of actions and alignment uh, with uh, other existing plans, it is also important to support implementation of the projects. Within the project, uh, we have prepared a number of project fishes and the number of funding proposals, uh, proposals arising from them. Uh, it is essential to be aware that uh, it is all about us, about people, uh, and uh, th think about it. Uh, why do we need cleaner environment and why do we need smart city solutions? So uh, keep in mind, it is always, uh, and it is all about us. And through this project, we committed to connect relevant st stakeholders, inform them, uh, build their capacities and make them aware in order, in order to make uh, changes in their respective areas. Uh, next, have a look, uh, please, at those numbers in following slides. Uh, within the project, we supported development of 107 local energy and climate plans, SECAPs, uh, with a vision to 2050 and 11 regional plans or recommendation documents. Next. Uh, those action plans cover a number of uh, actions from different fields, from buildings and street lighting to waste, transport and renewables. Uh, so holistic approach and dialogue is necessary in uh, reaching set goals in local communities. And we are working on shifting from uh, perceiving energy, not as sector, but rather as a horizontal principle that every sector can can observe. Next. Uh, however, CTRAC 50 with 107 stackups developed uh, resulted with the potential of approximately 13,000 gigawatt hours in energy savings and uh, renewable energy production by 2030 and cons consequently uh, 9,020 kilo, uh, 200 kilotons of CO2 equivalent emission saved. When looking at 2050, 2050 we are talking about uh, uh, more than 20,000 uh, gigawatt hours and almost 16,000 kilotons of CO2 emissions. Next. Um, as I already mentioned, um, we supported local authorities in preparation of project issues and funding proposals. Uh, that they uh, applied at different programs for financing and co and co-financing. Uh, it resulted with uh, 50 million euros of investments uh, that already uh, approved, that are all already approved, and more than 30 million euros of proposals submitted. We believe uh, next. Uh, we, we believe uh, that the project has rolled out a lot of investments and motivated many 
cities and other relevant stakeholders uh, who can make a difference in their local communities. So we did all um, the project results uh, justify the purpose of the project and confirm its sustainability. We can move next. And of course, there is uh, one more important output of the project. Uh, there were identified uh, national priorities in 11 EU countries on the energy and climate planning process and multi-level governance. Uh, these recommendations uh, stand out from the implementation of three round tables uh, held at each national level with participants from the public administration and other national actors and stakeholders. Uh, we put em emphasis to stakeholders' engagement, uh, share of uh, knowledge and experience, planning according to local and regional needs and characteristics, and, and consideration of energy poverty and inequalities. And finally, uh, we put all important results uh, in guidebook for achieving carbon neutrality by 2050, uh, which describes the key steps in the planning process, uh, outlines important considerations uh, in each step and in each step and presents best practices uh, to, to inspire local and regional authorities to help them better design actions to, to take forward in the decarbonization process. So this guidebook, guidebook is uh, currently available in English and will uh, in, in 10 more languages uh, very, very soon. So to conclude, uh, we see energy agencies as a catalyst and key stakeholders in supporting local authorities, establishing multi-level governments, uh, that, that can uh, facilitate its work, uh, especially for the smaller ones where we see joint setups as a good solution. Uh, furthermore, we are aware that each local authority has its uh, political agenda, but we have to stick together and think and act in the same direction. And finally, we suggest uh, and are working on movement from grants to innovative financing mechanisms uh, and, and lack of financial resources cannot be an excuse. Uh, there is always a way. So I will conclude with it. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Um Then we'll move to uh, Thomas Knight from the Oven Ronald Energy Environment Agency in France, presenting a uh, tourist story. Uh, and a tool to help decision making uh, in uh, local and regional authorities. Um, um, Thomas, the floor is yours. Yes, thank you very much. Uh, hello, everybody. Thank you again for this uh, opportunity. Um, yes, so I'm Thomas Knight. I'm a project manager at the um, Energy Agency of Auvergne Rhone Alpes region in France. Um, this tool has been uh, something that we've been working on for a few years now. Um, but first of all, I'd like to quickly just uh, introduce you to our agency, I suppose. So if you could go to the next slide, please. Um, so quickly, who, who we are, um, we're basically a, set, a resource center for, for the, all of the region with about 1,500 requests per year for information um, across 70 live projects at the moment and around 15 of those are European projects. And we're working with many, many actors, so about uh, 450 different partners across different uh, topics and, uh, and sectors uh, to, to be able to really uh, aid the, the local territories in their, in their development. Um, and just a brief uh, view of, of some of our members, we've got about 80 at the moment, um, just for information. So Terry Story, um, so it's an online data and planning tool. So um, I'd like to go through about why we want to develop, why have we developed this tool and why will we, we will continue to develop this tool, how it's governed, and then also the current and the future development of this tool. So first of all, why we are developing this tool. Um, as you all know, uh, European countries are, are well, Europe as a whole is, is very, um, has, a, has a, a great objective to be carbon neutral uh, by 2050. So what 
the questions we're trying to respond to are how does how do regional objectives and regional actions um, contribute to this both on a short term and a long term scale so up to 2030 and 2050 and then even on a kind of on a on a a level even more detailed how can local uh, governments and territories contribute to this so take into account obviously the sustainable energy uh, and climate action plans that have that have to be developed uh, how can these um, contribute how can territories uh, use these to contribute to the the global um, objective um, so terry story uh, it's been in place since uh, 2018 um, i it basically contributes to the management of, of the energy and climate transition uh, by tracking different policy trajectories and objectives, um, different contributions to these objectives, and also um, implementation of these plans, uh, these local plans on a, on a local and a regional scale. And then also making the link obviously between different uh, partners, different expertise of our agencies, different missions across different themes and different sectors. Uh, next slide please thank you um so terry story it, it kind of brings together a lot of different actors there's lots and lots of different uh, people that uh, contribute to this uh, more and more as the years pass um obviously then we've got a lot of stakeholders that that kind of develop the the the, the direction of where the tool should be going to make sure that the data uh, is well managed and, and and made available to the territories to be able to contribute as, as much as possible in a constructive way. Um, so currently there's uh, six regions in France. So it started with one, which is Auvergne Rhône Alpes. Um, and now we've got six regions that are that are being developed within the tool. Um, so if you there's a visualization of that on the next slide. So uh, we're kind of in the middle on the right hand side of France, Auvergne Rhône Alpes, and then Little by little, we're adding different uh, regions. Uh, currently, Terry Story is obviously, as you can see, focused mainly in France, but uh, we've got many um, kind of uh, eyes on different European projects and things, uh, different op opportunities, different partners outside of France as well to be able to um, develop Terry Story and uh, contribute as much as we can. So, the primary role of this tool, I suppose, is to make the data available to the, the territories for, for them to be able to uh, make a kind of have a smooth and, and um, detailed transition uh, within the energy and climate uh, transition. Um, so things like uh, you can visualize different indicators such as renewable energy potentials, uh, energy consumption, greenhouse gas emissions, and also different, different mobility uh, options available uh, throughout different um, uh, towns and cities. Um, but there's many, many more other than that and then also what this kind of what these actions uh within for example the the sustainable energy and climate plans have on the social and economic side so taking into account employment um as well as investment added value um and trying to harmonize this across local regional and national levels so how are we governed uh, like i mentioned before we're kind of it, well, no, we are uh, primarily uh, based in France, so a lot of the actors are French, um, but this is kind of in, within in development. Uh, we've got a project consortium which has, has been developed since 2020, so last year. Um, then we've got the National Pilot Committee, which governs overall developments of the tool, so the budget, different partners, and also the intellectual property of the tool. And then within each region, there's different committees to, to determine the developments specific to those regions that where where the where the region um, feels that they should um, act for the for the for the for the benefit of the territories in certain regions and then also project partners can also contribute uh, by themselves so moving on to current and future developments so i've got some just uh, screenshots of uh, the tool itself so first of all on the top right hand side you can see kind of the visualization of of um, how it's presented so it's quite a detailed map of, uh, of analysis and data here you can see uh, i think it's the energy bills within a certain um, territory uh, compared to different uh, communes 
um, next to each other. But then we've also got things like uh, renewable energy consumption, production, as well as potential uh, emissions, mobility, as, and, um, and uh, other indicators such as those. Uh, sorry, one just before. And on the bottom, uh, there's also the energy system forecasting. So on the top, it's the historic data. And on the bottom, it's forecasting. So here you can actually input your plans uh, for, for development, such as what you may find in a, in a CCAP plan. And you can see the impact on energy consumption, production, emissions, and also the socioeconomic impacts as well. This is kind of the dashboard that we have uh, within Terry Story as well. So here you can identify with one glance uh, the primary um, the, the primary drivers in certain um, uh, uh, routes towards achieving certain objectives. So across the top, you've got energy bills and emissions, and on the bottom, you've got uh, production, um, the the contribution of renewables to your to your consumption as well. Um, so you can kind of you can change those as well, and they're interactive. And then finally, what the where, where kind of we are right now trying to develop the tool. Um, so obviously we've got lots of projects ongoing, both national and European projects. Um, so as you saw, saw one of the, the dashboard to tracking uh, the objectives, that was something that's, uh, that was, that has been contributed to by a project. S things like mobility indicators, other projects have contributed to that. And then also one day we'll have, we'll be, in, be able to integrate different energy flows within each territory. Um, so as I mentioned, within three years, we've actually increased from one to six French regions. Uh, and then we've having lots and lots more interest on the international stage. One uh, project that we're taking part in um, to basically share the best practices of, energy, of data visualization is Energy Watch. I'm not sure if uh, any of you know which uh, project this is, but uh, I'll put the link in the chat for anybody interested. Um, but Terry Story plays a, a role in that, that project as well. And then finally, so, and then finally, Terry Story is soon to be open source, meaning the the, the, the coding and all of the information behind uh, the, the, the tool is going to be uh, open to all. So finally, um, I just want to, if you put the next slide on. Thank you. Uh, this is the website to go and check it out, have a look, uh, play with it. And uh, and if, if, they, if, if, you, if that interests you, please get in touch. Um, and my contact details are on the very last slide. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you very much, Thomas, for uh, this uh, uh, interesting presentation. So what we heard here are examples in more than 10 countries where uh, local authorities are already looking uh, to 2050. It uh, shows, obviously, that within the Covenant of Mayors Network, you uh, will be able already to find inspiration from uh, fellow cities uh, ready to uh, reach uh, climate neutrality, so I think it's uh, it's really uh, interesting to see uh, the ambition of uh, of cities around Europe. Um, we are moving on now to um, the last part of our session. Uh, we have three panelists, uh, and um, they will be uh, also um, sharing with you uh, their experiences. So um, I think that uh, Yulia arrived, uh, and it's going to yes, be yes. great. Thank you. So <laughs> thank you very much. Uh, so this is uh, Mr. Yulia Domatz, uh, who is the deputy director of, uh, or is the, sorry, director of the Northwest Croatia Regional Energy Agency. Um, he's also a member of the political board of the Covenant of Mayors Europe, and he has another very important hat as a special advisor on energy and climate at the office of the president of the Republic of Croatia. So uh, as you can see uh, from uh, a very uh, <laughs> large uh, set of uh, skills, um, you, uh, um, sorry, <laughs> confused. So um, this is, uh, 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 the floor is now yours. Um, uh, we have questions first, or you have a presentation? I don't remember, sorry. Uh, I believe we have some questions. Okay, uh, great, thank you. So, um, yes, uh, our questions to you today are, um, 
So uh, Europe, uh, the European Commission has the objective to become the first uh, uh, climate neutral continent by 2050 and to reduce the GHG emissions by 55% uh, by 2030. Um, at the Covenant of Mayors and with the Covenant of Mayors initiative, uh, we are pushing uh, signatories to join and uh, to, to, to have uh, this uh, ambitious uh, target. So as a representative of the political board, um, and um, as also like uh, you're, you're very much uh, involved in the uh, political uh, scene of your country, um, do you think that uh, municipalities in Croatia are ready to commit to this target? What is the support uh, that they need? And um, can you tell us as well, maybe uh, how uh, the government, how the Croatian government will uh, support municipality in achieving uh, climate neutrality? Yeah, thank you very much, Elodie, and, and hello, everybody. Uh, uh, of course, it's it's an interesting day. I, I tried today uh, to be at two places at the same time, and I obviously succeeded. I, I just wanted to share with you, we just concluded uh, a an, an great, uh, a very interesting conference about uh, a new European Bauhaus, which is going to be uh, implemented in Croatia as well. And the, the participation was, was so high level. Uh, so for the first time ever, uh, uh, and, and as LAD told you, well, I, I'm in, in the sector for quite some time. We had three ministers, uh, national ministers and the prime minister discussing a uh, new European Bauhaus and how we are going to implement that in Croatia. So that's why, why, why I was a little bit late in this panel. But speaking about uh, local communities and local, local and regional level, uh, well, in Croatia at least, and I am deeply, deeply convinced it's, it's the same in Europe. Uh, they are the ones who, who opened the door for, for, for everything what we are speaking uh, about today, for, for the European Green Deal, uh, for, for the climate pact. Uh, uh, let me remind you that uh, Covenant of Mayors is actually the first uh, initiative uh, and a voluntary commitment of cities to go beyond national targets. And I, I still remember well, uh, for example, my city of Zagreb, uh, the capital of Croatia, was signing the Covenant of Mayors, uh, well, uh, back in, in 2009. Uh, I think the Riga was the first European capital and then Zagreb and then, well, many others, of course, followed. So the, the, the co local communities, uh, cities, municipalities, uh, where we're implementing uh, most ambitious projects and we're demonstrating in, in practice how green, uh, resilient, climate neutral Europe can be achieved. We had uh, climate neutral uh, cities uh, and, and well, the division of climate neutral uh, uh, regions before uh, uh, there was that important political decision that the Europe is going to be climate neutral uh, continent. So, so without without repeating uh, myself too much, uh, uh, local communities, uh, cities, municipalities, and regions, of course, are the, the pioneers. Are the supported with their energy agencies, of course, are the pioneers. They they uh, they made possible this this big movement, European movement, uh, now today, uh, and I think only together, of course, in cooperation uh, uh, on all that levels, European level, national level, and local and regional level, we can actually achieve uh, uh, that cl climate, uh, climate neutrality as a very important goal. Uh, you mentioned uh, uh, that's that national context, LOD and, and, and Croatian uh, government. I'm, I'm happy to say that uh, uh, again, Croatia is a small country and we were not uh, famous, at least so far, as being the most ambitious uh, European country in, in, in many areas, uh, uh, unfortunately. But there are many reasons, of course, historical reasons and other reasons for that. But uh, for the first time, I have a feeling that uh, in that recovery plan, we are going to, to go beyond that uh, well, I think it's 37% that uh, that that uh, share which should be should be spent and, and dedicated to green and digital. I think we are going much beyond that. Uh, so, so green and digital uh, nowadays, I think it's it's in the in the in the core of 
I think every government program, and, and uh, I know well, we have now some very concrete uh, investment programs already, which are going to be financed from National Recovery Plan. And uh, uh, they all have very strong uh, green renewable energy, energy efficiency component and, and digital component. So it's a very exciting uh, moment in Croatia, definitely in, in, in the rest of Europe as well. Uh, and I, I can see that progress from, from day to day. Uh, speaking about uh, fund and funding, uh, uh, I'm happy that uh, from 2004, we had a National Energy Efficiency and Environment Protection Fund. At that time, it was uh, a pioneering pioneer institution, uh, which uh, we didn't have in, in all European countries and definitely not in, in Southeast of Europe, where, where Croatia is. Uh, and with, with that innovative concept, I think we also opened the door and, and, and established some, some interesting schemes, like for example, uh, and in that program, Regea played a significant part uh, financing uh, households uh, to do that uh, green switch to install photovoltaics, to do energy retrofit and so on. Uh, so it was really exciting to, to see that development. And I think now we are, we are in, in, uh, in times where we are going to uh, deliver and, and uh, well, uh, enjoy the, 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 the fruit of, of all that efforts uh, uh, and, and uh, uh, work, hard work uh, uh, done by uh, not only the government, but uh, regions, uh, municipalities, cities, and their energy agencies, of course. Back to you, Melody. Thank you very much um, for this very positive uh, uh, speech. And uh, I hope like uh, the others uh, are, are also like uh, as uh, enthusiastic and positive about uh, the development in their regions and, uh, and country. Um, I am calling uh, Silvio De Nigris from the uh, Piemonte region in Italy, uh, who is a territorial coordinator uh, and has been uh, for many years now. Yeah. Silvio, can, can you open Yeah, I, I'm here. Okay. Can you hear Great. me? Yeah, yes. good. We can uh, hear and see you. So you. Uh, also like uh, more or less the same questions like um, in your region. Uh, so what about these targets? Like uh, are the local authorities ready? Are they, uh, can they reach uh, climate neutrality by uh, 2050? Uh, how feasible does it seem uh, to reach the 55% reduction target by 2030? Okay, yes. So I will speak about my region, and my region is Piemonte. Is uh, we, we are located in the northwest part of uh, of Italy. And let me give you just few numbers, uh, just to, to to make sure that uh, we understand each other. Uh, in 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 my region, we have more than one thousand two hundred municipalities, which uh, is a huge number. I would say that uh, most of, of them are very small. Mm -hmm. the, so they, they, they is usually we say the lack of capacity, lack of finance, lack of uh, technical skills, and so on. Okay, but they are really willing to do something, and um, and uh, and we had a, a quite good addition of the covenant measure in the past. We have more than three hundred uh, signatories, uh, but here again. Uh, most of them uh, signed the covenant measure uh, before 2020. So let's say their job is done, <laughs> more or less, uh, in a good or bad way. Uh, it's not the time to, to say, but uh, I, I think uh, we have to start a new planning area, energy planning uh, or climate planning area, era. Uh, and, and for sure, the, in the region, this is starting. Uh, we have to start this. So um, let's say uh, it's obvious that the, the targets are very challenging uh, and, uh, and you ask about the feasibility uh, of, uh, of reaching these targets. I, I, I don't have the, the, the right answer now, but I think it's not a really a matter of, uh, of uh, is it feasible or not. I think that's a must. This is something that we have to do in any way. And, uh, and I think that the, 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 um, yeah, the vision is set, the targets are there, and, and we, I think everybody should, should, should play his role. And uh, so it's not a matter of, uh, for me at least, uh, or, or what I will uh, 
provide as a message to my municipalities. Uh, it, it is something that uh, uh, should we do it? Is it credible? Or uh, we must. We must do it. We must play our part, and then we will see. Okay, so so it's not a matter of uh, of if, but it's more how and and when and when is as soon as possible because uh, 2030 is the end of corner, of course. And um, I, I would say we don't start from scratch. We we we, we did something in the past, uh, but. We have to make a step forward and upgrade our our, our, our targets, our, our um, motivation, and and so on. And um, what I what I can tell you is that uh, yes, we are the territorial coordinator from the beginning. I would say, or more or less, of the covenant of nature. We played this role in a different way in 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 the, in the past. So now uh, again, we are uh, relaunching the the initiative, or this is the intention now. And um, and we set a kind of uh, internal agreement with different departments uh, of, of the region dealing with mitigation and adaptation because uh, for sure, I'm, uh, for example, I'm in the sustainable energy sector, but I don't have the, the, the capacity or the, the, <laughs> the, the skills or the, 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 yeah, the function to, to support municipality also in, in adaptation. And so we, we, we decided to, to jointly work with different departments to support municipalities in our in our uh, in our region, we are going to organize uh, a, a first conference meeting uh, to inform municipalities that uh, also the the, the 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 game is changing now. We should uh, go a, a step further. So we have in front of us this first step, which is information. So uh, and we will call for action our municipality to uh, renew the targets, uh, uh, join again the, the the covenant, which is the the. I would say that the ideal framework for 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 um, moving forward as a, as a as a movement, let's say, and and uh, as a region, we will um, okay, we will support them with the, with information, but also with uh, more concrete actions. Uh, one is uh, uh, data; uh, it's uh, really impressive, and already knew the the the, the work um, presented by Damas. Uh, we are doing something similar, maybe less uh, less uh, sexy, let's say, but we are collecting energy data and, and uh, environmental data on behalf of the municipalities, and we are providing those data in a in a um, in a in a shared uh, place in a, in a cloud where each municipality can go and have access to most of the data they need to to start the, the planning process. I think this is uh, something that deals with transaction cost. Uh, maybe you don't need two years to, to, to develop a, a, a plan if you already have most of the data in a place where you can go download and then understand how to, uh, to manage this. So uh, I think we will boost this activity in the future, which is uh, in a way successful from my side, in my opinion, and I think it's essential. It's a starting point. Um, and and uh, I think what we will uh, will do very soon is uh, try to work on templates on on um, e e even in this case uh, trying to standardize a little bit the process uh, uh, of uh, developing a, a second, which doesn't mean that uh, every municipality must have the same. But uh, uh, I think the place where we can we can act as territorial coordinator is really transition cost you, you mean there are some something that is always overlapping or we can give some tools to 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 our municipalities in order to have some part of the job already done so this is something that we are going to uh, to do and also provide a kind of a list of actions that is matching with the regional strategies. Uh, for example, uh, I don't know, just a, as an example, I can mention uh, energy communities. Okay, if you if you are in the government, if you are developing a second, you have to take into consideration this as an option and uh, there are initiatives and projects that you can afford, uh, that we can provide you. Okay, for, this is uh, just a, an example in order to make this multi-level governance uh, a real uh, bit more concrete. And um, also what we are doing is trying to create a, a network at the local and regional level of uh, covenant supporters, let's say. So uh, some uh, agencies or bank foundations or other stakeholders that 
have in their mind or in their mission the support of municipalities in in this process of the energy transition. Uh, so we are we are trying to, to to create a network and and try to discuss together what is best to put on uh, in uh, in support of the municipalities. Uh, let me conclude just with uh, with with two two other sentences. Um, well, the, the covenant measure for me, as it was in the past, I think it would be also in the future. It, it's uh, the the uh, the. Um, the perfect landing place for any project, any opportunity that at regional level we are setting up or designed for, 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 for local authorities. So to create a strong network of uh, uh, municipalities which have a strategy for, for 2030 and, and beyond is, is essential also for us in order to, to have some, some some people <laughs> to discuss with when we have a project, when we have uh, uh, opportunities to, to, to provide. Huh? So it's, it's really important, crucial to have some, some yeah, local authorities able to react on, on any kind of, um, of uh, support we want, to, we want to give them. And also another, another point is that, uh, as, as in the past, I think uh, that the network or major is a can, um, yeah, we will keep on giving them some kind of uh, preference uh, in the in access of regional grants whenever possible, uh, in a way to make sure that uh, they can see also concretely some some advantage to, to join the this network. So, really challenging, uh, but the question uh, I would answer: we must do it uh, in any case, and then we'll see. <laughs> And thank you for presenting as well. Like uh, we, uh, the multi-level governance is organized in, uh, in your region. This is uh, one, I think, one of the uh, great uh, success as well of the covenant of mayors. And that's why today as well, you would see uh, some, uh, some uh, in most of the examples like this uh, uh, cooperation and collaboration uh, aspect. Um, I am told that uh, uh, Jan uh, Vermeulen from Danes uh, had some problem with the microphone. Uh, Jan, did you manage to fix your issues? I think it's okay. Yes, we can hear you very well. So, um, as a mayor of a municipality of Danes in Belgium, uh, you are uh, one of the first, uh, let's say, like uh, 2050 uh, signatories to the Covenant of Mayors. So we are obviously eager to know more about uh, your experience, uh, how you're planning to achieve it, uh, what are uh, the concrete action uh, you, you, you put in your, uh, in your plan, uh, how uh, this is perceived as well at, uh, at local level, like uh, having this uh, very long-term planning. So the floor is yours, Jan. Okay, thank you. Um, yeah, just like in the rest of the world, the impact um, of our changing climate is becoming more and more visible also in Belgium. And as you know, uh, only a few months ago, the southern side of our country suffered uh, the most severe flooding in years. So climate change is clearly here uh, and it's happening right now. And that's what, uh, what, why we signed both the 2030 as well as the 2050 commitment. Uh, so uh, yeah. Now, how do we plan to reach these uh, commitments? That's the big question. Um, as we speak, we are developing our new climate mitigation and adaptation plans. Uh, but before I will talk about some specific uh, examples of actions, I want to tell you about two principles we, uh, that we highly value. Uh, first of all, climate change impacts everyone and we can only fight it together uh, therefore, we find it important that everyone gets the chance to participate in the city's climate policy. The next three months, we uh, facilitate different participation moments or climate cafes for our citizens, our youth, our local entrepreneurs and businesses, but also for industrial players and farmers. Uh, and by making them co-creators of our climate policy, we hope to enlarge their sense of responsibility and to strengthen the commitment of all players. So this way, the city hopes to become an ally for all those on our territory who want to fight climate change. Second, climate change com uh, commitment sometimes goes above and beyond what we can measure. 
uh, when designing our climate plans, we obviously uh, focus on the reduction of energy use, the production of renewable green on sustainable mobility and a greener environment. But besides that, we also want to raise awareness about uh, sustainable eating habits, uh, food waste, circular and sharing economy. Uh, the direct uh, local impact of these types of climate actions are a bit harder to measure, but we gather the, uh, these actions under the label sustainable consumption and production. Of course, there's a still a long road ahead, but first of all, um, uh, we had some uh, some highlights where we uh, where we proud uh, uh, for. Um, we are um, approving our cycling infrastructure. We have been elected uh, uh, best uh, bicycle city uh, in Belgium for three times already. Um, we open new bridges, new uh, bicycle speed highways between um, Ghent uh, and Deense, and we will continue it to uh, another big city in the neighborhood, Kortrijk. Um, and we will do that um, and open it in April 2022. Um, we also want to encourage um, mix, a mix of different modes of sustainable transportation. Uh, our train station is uh, an important key in all of this. Uh, travelers who arrive in our city can easily make the switch to a blue bike. That's a bike sharing system, uh, which you can use for the last mile. And it's uh, active in many cities in Flanders. But in Danza, we uh, you don't have to pay for your ride. Um, and uh, our inhabitants, they don't have to pay for their rides as well in other cities. So that was um, a big success. Uh, another important element of our green transport policy is shared mobility. Uh, as you all know, uh, one shared car can replace up to 10, um, 10 private cars. And we have the ambition to have um, uh, publicly shared cam uh, cars in all of our city, uh, 17 sub-municipalities. Um, so um, we invented also in Belgium the, the mobile point uh, where people can go to uh, experience uh, shared mobility and um, the local, the Flandern government, they took over that uh, initiative. So by encouraging uh, cycling and shared mobility, uh, we, we directly reduce the emission of greenhouse gases on our territory and we raise also awareness about climate change. Uh, step by step, we expand these ambitions to other sectors. And by 2030, we want uh, to cover the whole range of climate challenges, uh, going from uh, renewable energy over sustainable consumption to improving the resilience of our um, natural environment. And we also, uh, for concluding, we have also uh, big ambitions in uh, encouraging uh, industrial partners to um, to work with CO2 neutral uh, concrete. Uh, that's a big ambition, but uh, I'm hoping that we will succeed uh, to um, uh, in that ambition uh, against 2030. So thank you for your attention. Thank you very much for uh, for this example. Um, I don't know if we have uh, uh, some questions in the chat uh, or not, but uh, I will. Uh, I, I I do have a, a couple of questions uh, for uh, Silvio, for Julie, but also for Jan. Uh, so Silvio and Julie, if I'm not mistaken, you had a municipal election this year, uh, both uh, in Croatia and uh, and in Piemonte. Um, did you see a change in the? In the, in the way uh, climate change and energy uh, uh, was uh, uh, addressed by candidates or by uh, the local campaign? Uh, was it strong in the campaign and uh, in the results of the election? I'm asking because uh, also for us at, at, at the Covenant of Mayor's uh, office and as uh, we, we, need to, we need to understand um, what is the narrative we uh, can use to, to, to push more mayors uh, to, to commit to 2050 or to have really high ambition for uh, 2030. And uh, <laughs> the question applies as well to Jens, uh, like uh, were you elected on a very green program? Or um, did, you, did you already said to your, uh, to your, uh, to your to the voters, like uh, I'm gonna have a, a very green vision and long-term vision?
I'm not sure if we can open the mic, so can, can you please help me with uh, with the mic of uh, Silvio Yulianian? Yes, here we are. Okay. Okay. <laughs> we are back in business. Back in business. So I was I was re-elected two times as um and, and my nickname in Belgium is uh, the bicycle mayor. <laughs> okay. Uh, and when I started to um, to ride a bicycle into the city, uh, people thought I was uh, I, 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 I've gone nuts. Eh? Or um, I'm also a member of, of um, the Christian Democratic Party. Um, normally, we used to be um, quite uh, ambitious um, for, for the green environment. But um, in Belgium, we had a new green party, as uh, in many other countries in Europe. Um, and everybody thought I was become, became a member of the Green Party. But um, what we see in Belgium, that uh, we started with the program 10 years ago, what we see in Belgium, um, all other um, uh, municipalities and, and cities, they took over the, um, the ambition of our city to become also a bicycle city. Uh, because it gives a lot of solutions, not only uh, for uh, the mobility problems and congestion problems we have um, in our cities, we all have them, but especially also um, yeah, in, in, um, in, in, in coping and attacking the climate uh, uh, challenges uh, we all have to face. Uh, so therefore you cannot um, uh, implement a good climate plan without a good bicycle plan. And the combination between bicycles and public transport becomes more and more important, uh, especially in, in, in very dense regions and cities. Um, so we have a lot of success. So this afternoon and today we have even a, a big congress in Flanders um, concerning design for bicycle, where we meet a lot of um, um, yeah, experts um, in, in, um, around us, these teams. And uh, we see that a lot of other cities in Belgium have, um, yeah, have, have uh, done some great things. Um, for example, uh, the city of Leuven, uh, where we uh, were held the World Championships um, last week. They did also a great uh, job. And uh, it's from here that we are talking to you. Thank you. Silvio Julier. Uh... I don't know who start. Yeah, please, please go. go, go oh, okay. No. Uh, okay. Election is very uh, is happening now. Let's say because we will have a second turn uh, on the election, so the, the game is not over for for, for most of the cities. But uh, yeah, the impression was that uh, environment, uh, in general speaking, and energy is in the top priority of of each candidates or each each party evolve. A kind of uh, green uh, uh, naming uh, in in the in the symbol uh, everywhere. So uh, this is uh, a good news in a sense because uh, it's a, it's a top of priority. And uh, but it's also you know you just speak of what the, the the people want to want to hear. And uh, so we will uh, see concretely uh, what what will happen. And uh, yeah, here I'm speaking more as a citizen. Let's say. Um, I, I think that the, the time is right to, to address a new challenge to the, to the new majors, uh, to the new local authorities representative, because uh, I think they spent this in, 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 the, in the election uh, period and, and now it's time to, to, to go for the action. That's why also the, the, the inform, information day, the conference that we are planning uh, uh, for, for the Covenant of Major is, uh, has been scheduled uh, uh, after mid-November uh, in a way that we can address the new majors uh, uh, that uh, are sitting in, in, the, in the coming weeks. Uh, and um, yeah, I, 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 for sure it is a, it is a top priority everywhere. Yeah, that's what I was asking because when I heard you about uh, talking about this conference, I was thinking, okay, so I guess this is to also like uh, try to get the new mayors on board. And, uh, yeah, when, to... when we were thinking about the date, we we said, okay, let's let's wait for the new one to come, and uh, uh, yeah, realize where they are, and then we will address them. <laughs> Thank you. And Julia in Croatia, uh, you had elections, right, in, in May? 
Yeah, yeah, we, we, we just concluded uh, uh, the, 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 the whole series of elections. So, so we don't have elections now for three years, which is, which is very good. So it's time to deliver something now. Uh, and yes, for the first time, I think ever, uh, uh, sustainable energy, climate protection was, was uh, high on everybody's agenda. Well, the question now is uh, how 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 sincere that is, uh, because I don't, don't think you can be a successful politician now and and ignore that topics. Uh, the difference now is uh, to to find the, the the politicians who are going to actually uh, implement and and deliver and and do something, not just talk about something. I'm speaking only about Croatia, of course. Uh, so so that's that's going to be a challenge for for people to to, to recognize uh, such politicians and to of course uh, award the politicians who are uh, who, who really think serious and who are going to deliver something uh, for the climate uh, and for for, for the uh, green transition thank you very much um i see we are uh, almost uh, reaching the end of the session so uh, i think uh, now we can um, I don't see any question in the chat, so I will uh, thank uh, all our speakers uh, today. Uh, I, I uh, hope the presentations and testimonials uh, have uh, inspired uh, some uh, some participants, and um, I, um, I, re I really thank you uh, for your participation. Um, and um, we will have uh, other events as well, so please uh, check the calendar. I think there are other events uh, uh, next week at the EU Week of uh, Regions and Cities. Um, so please, uh, please check the Covenant of May's uh, calendar. We uh, hope you enjoyed this uh, ceremony as much as, uh, as we had. Uh, we really hope that maybe the next time will be uh, uh, in person the ceremony. And, um, if you haven't done so, so I encourage you to uh, uh, join the renewed uh, Covenant of Mayors. Thank you very much uh, to all participants and speakers, uh, and uh, I wish you a good uh, rest of the day. Bye bye. Bye. Thank you, everyone. Goodbye. Have a nice afternoon, everyone.